next week on vet school fiona gets her first chance to do an operation Truda takes part in an equine emergency and Jasper Carrot is plunged into another life or death crisis while Steve takes charge. I've got a new partner. Why did I do that? I was going to say the same thing, but you got there first. I did. This is Esther McVeigh. I'm Eamon Holmes and we've got a great new series off. Why do they do that for you with amazing stories like these? How Wonder Woman Judy Ledden smashed the world hang gliding record. Multiplicity, how Hollywood magic created four Michael Keatons on the big screen. And how Williams powered Damon Hill to the glory of the world championship. That's how do they do that? Wednesday, 8 o'clock. BBC One. It's Sykes over on BBC Two now, and in half an hour, the all-singing and dancing Paul Merton rolls out the comedy. He follows at 9.30. Three weeks ago, 74 people died in a fight over a tunnel. That's the cold fact. Behind it lies two men in a struggle for one piece of land. Two nations who've never known peace. 74 lives, 74 funerals. That's the harsh reality. But is there no longer the will or the way to find peace in the Middle East? Panorama, tonight, 9.30 on BBC One. And that's after the nine o'clock news on BBC One with Michael Burke. Britain's politicians have rushed to join the campaign for a more moral society launched by the widow of the murdered headmaster, Philip Lawrence. Wembley gets football's vote for the National Stadium of the 21st century. And 30 years on, Abba Van remembers a generation of children lost in seconds. Good evening. The main political parties are scrambling for the moral high ground tonight, vying with each other to support the campaign for a reassertion of family and civic values launched by Frances Lawrence, the widow of the murdered London headmaster. Mrs Lawrence's manifesto for the nation urged a nationwide campaign against violence and for good citizenship. The Catholic Church also moved into the political arena today, publishing an election guide called The Common Good, that's been criticised for appearing to endorse many Labour Party policies. Our religious affairs correspondent Mike Waldridge reports. Just as the death of her husband became a national symbol of horror over the culture of violence, Frances Lawrence's initiative is becoming a watershed too. Today she wanted others to join in the debate. I really think today is the time for other people to speak. And, um, I've, I've nothing further to say at the moment. But as I did say, um, we shall be having meetings towards the end of the week. In her manifesto, Frances Lawrence is calling for a ban on the sale of combat knives, new primary school courses in good citizenship, and a higher status in society for teachers and for the police. The government says it's already acting on some of Mrs Lawrence's ideas. She is in uh, a particularly effective position, tragically, but nevertheless effectively, to focus such a debate on violence in society. Frances Lawrence is speaking for so many parents, for so many women in society who want to see us developing the citizenship programme from teaching in school uh, to offering young people hope of employment and of connecting up with society and we welcome what she said as a very substantial contribution. The Liberal Democrats say Mrs Lawrence is right to see the school and the home as the front line. What is really striking both about what she is doing and indeed what the Dunplain parents have been doing is the way in which the impetus for putting these issues on the agenda and trying to force a pace is coming from individuals at community level. It's not coming from the institutions of government. The Catholic Church has not only given its strong backing to Francis Lawrence, it's also drawn on its social teaching to issue a much-heralded document of its own today, designed to help voters assess the party's claims and promises in the run-up to the general election. Called the common good, it points out that Catholic teaching supports a just wage and a statutory minimum wage if necessary. It gives strong support for trade unionism. 
It says market forces should be regulated and aren't infallible, and it takes a pro-European stance too. The Catholic Church in this country to attend... Portraying society as gripped by self-interest and pessimism, the document's been seen in some quarters as thinly disguised support for new labour. If in some respects um, it seems to be leaning in one direction, one can also find a good deal of things in the document which in fact go in another direction. So it's a matter of people having informed consciences about the way they will vote when it comes to a general election. And these are maybe less antagonistic times than when the churches have been this way before, most notably 11 years ago with the Church of England's clash.